the workshop I'm doing today is for our, my seasonal house display. So I kind of want to show you this. I want to kind of explain to you how it works in case somebody brand new is watching. And then we're going to, the workshop is going to be, we're actually going to make these canvases, the fall canvas set to, together, together right here. So I know it's Labor Day weekend and I know a lot of you have plans. Um, if you have already purchased the seasonal house display and the fall sets of canvases, we will definitely be emailing you this replay link. So when you get ready to create your uh, DIY decor kits, you can, you'll have access to these. Okay. <laughs> oh, no time for rest for me, Kathy. No, actually, I'm, I'm excited to do this one. I really love this fall set of canvases. And uh, yeah, and then this afternoon, I'm headed to my youngest grandson turned two yesterday. Camden turned two yesterday. So I am going, I have a family birthday party to go to this afternoon to celebrate Mr. Camden. So I'm super happy about that too. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this DIY decor kit. This is actually a kit. This is something that you can order. So I'm going to kind of, um, I'm going to put this one down for just a moment because I want to hold this up so that you can see. Let me make sure I have this on here somewhat straight. <laughs> so this is actually a kit. I have it on an easel here and I'm sorry. I think I'm going to take it off the easel because when it's on the easel, I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. All right. So let's talk about this beautiful, this is a, um, I think you can see it. Okay. It's a shiplap house shiplap house display um and this is one of the fall sets of canvases that hangs on it so everything you can see we've got this beautiful kind of vintage knob and let me take that off that vintage knob and a uh, knob plate love those look at the handle over here really pretty all of those items come in the kit we have a video for you just on how to um do the paint technique on the house, on how to attach everything, all of that. And then we sell this seasonal house display with a set of canvases. Now we've been releasing a set of canvases. Uh, we started this, this uh, project, uh, this DIY decor kit series in the spring. So there was a set in the spring and then we did a set in the summer. In the summer, we did a summer one and one that was patriotic. And now we have our fall set. So if you've not started this um, particular DIY decor kit series, if you don't have a house yet, you have, um, I posted the links in the description on this page. You can order everything together. We have um, our, our two little canvas sets here that are our fall canvas sets. Aren't they beautiful? Um, so you can order all of this together. Okay. Or if you've already started the house, I mean, the uh, uh, seasonal house display, the series, you can just order the fall canvas set. OK, so you can either either order the whole enchilada or just the fall canvas set um, because you've already made your house display. So this is so, so pretty. I'm going to put it back in the easel here. <laughs> And they're so fun because literally they just hang. They hang on um, our little seasonal display. So cute. I know a lot of um, customers that bought this have now bought second ones to make for people for gifts. So I think it's a great thing that you can give for a gift because you can kind of keep on giving because you can keep giving the little seasonal um, canvases to go on display on the house. Isn't that so cute? So let's see how the other one looks. I want you to see this one kind of up close. Isn't that gorgeous? You guys, I have some fun techniques to share with you today. Um, this is featuring napkin art. So maybe you've never played with napkins before. This is a great way to kind of get a little taste for it. And let's look at the other one. I love this one too. So you can switch these out. One of them can be kind of like your general fall. And one of them can be like your Thanksgiving. I'm going to use this one for Thanksgiving. I love that these little jars um, that we can put words on them. Just so, so cute. They actually have the words on them. We're going to embellish them and make them even cuter. 
And I don't know if you can tell, but there's something new and special on these canvases. Uh, there's something new and special on these canvases. So I have kind of a new, um, something new to share with you uh, on uh, what we're going to do to them to make them feel a little more dimensional. Okay, isn't that pretty? They're just so beautiful. So you can get just the fall canvas set if you've already started your house display, or you can get all of it to get started. All right. Yes. You just ordered. Awesome, Gloria. That's wonderful. Um, Suzanne, I'm not sure if the spring kit is still available. I'll have to check, but I assure you this is going to continue. Okay. So um, our next step, our next set of canvases for this will be Christmas and winter. Okay, Christmas and winter, and then we'll jump right back into spring. And we may do uh, next year in 2024, we may do some little specialty canvases for specific um, things. Okay, I'm not going to go into that too much because that's all in the planning stages right now. But um, this series will continue into 2024. We just absolutely love it. Our customers have loved it. Um, it's just so much fun. And so we're going to jump into this today. Yeah. Uh, we still have some summer available. Cheryl says, okay, spring is not okay. See, that's why I have to have somebody on here that, that keeps track of things. <laughs> I only have so much bandwidth in this brain of mine. <laughs> so are you ready? Are you ready to get started? Um, I'm going to switch a few things around bit so that you can see downward on my uh, table because I want to show you the actual kit. What I'm making with you right now are going to be these two canvases. Okay, these two canvases, like I said, we have a video for you making the house. So we will repost that link. I'll probably just reshare it today. But then everyone that has purchased, we will be emailing you both links for the house and for um the canvases here aren't these gorgeous do you can, can you kind of see a little dimension going on in there it's gonna be super cute all right so give me a second i'm gonna move things around here good morning i do see you irene i do see you that's awesome okay so i'm going to move things around here just a little bit and that way I can grab these to show you when I need to. All right, you guys ready? Okay, we're going to jump in here. I'm going to switch these screens. All right, so I want to show you what would be in your kit. Now, obviously, this is not the, uh, the house itself. This is the kit for the canvases. So when you get your canvases, the kit's going to look something like this. Welcome home. Oops, sorry. Welcome home, fall canvas display. And I'm going to move this camera down a bit. <laughs> I'll move it further down here in just a moment. I'm trying to keep it from glaring too much. And it looks like it's a little fuzzy. So let me fix that fuzziness. Let me fix that real quick here. Sometimes it just needs to focus. Let me give it something to focus on really well here. There we go. Okay, much better. Much better. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I wanted to give it something to focus on so that you can really see what these things look like. So when you open up your kit... You're going to see you've got some goodies in the back here. I'm going to go ahead and just get everything out. And let's put that down there. So you're going, going to receive two six by six canvases. I'm going to go ahead and make myself small. You're going to get two six by six canvases. You're going to have um, uh, two napkins here, two squares of napkins here. And the reason I do this, you guys, is because sometimes you can have an oopsie, right? And I want to make sure you've got a backup napkin if you get a little tear, if you need to patch something up. Um, if you don't, then you've got an extra napkin to play with, okay? <laughs> you got an extra napkin to play with. And the same thing with this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous napkin. 
Isn't that pretty? Now you'll see with this napkin, you could have your pumpkins going this way or this way. That's completely up to you. All right, completely up to you. Um, when the kit gets into your hands, it is your property. You can do whatever ever, um, you can um, design with your napkins however you wish. And then I want to open this up. This is your little fun, your little goodie bag. Got a little goodie bag here. So everybody's going to have a couple of acorns, a couple of acorns. You're going to have a little wooden heart. And then you're going to have, I call this kind of your fiber bundle. So you're going to have some jute. You're going to have some twine. You're going to have a couple yards of each of these twill ribbons. I like using twill in the fall. It's just got a nice kind of feel to it. Um, and it's going to be just so pretty. Okay. So all of your fibers are here. And then the other thing you're going to have in your bag, and I want you to make sure you know this. Okay. We're going to use these kind of yellowish color leaves on one. We're going to use the orange colored leaves on another. But you guys, these look like one leaf, but they are not. They are two. Okay. So make sure to don't just assume that you have one of each, each. They're really, they're just really stuck together. So you've got two um, of each color. Okay. So make sure that you take those apart. Okay. Um, Irene, no, these aren't from the napkin club. These are um, specifically, we chose these specifically for our, our series here. So these particular napkins are not in the napkin club. So make sure and take apart your leaves here. And I know that watercolor pumpkin. Oh, and wait till you see it in person. Like it's just gonna, oh, you're just gonna, you're gonna love it. So I'm going to kind of move some things out of our way for a moment. I'm going to move the leaves out of the way. We're going to move our little heart and our acorns out of the way. We're going to move our little um, fiber bundle um, out of the way. And you guys are going to be, I think, pleasantly surprised this time. No paint. No paint was used on these. <laughs> We just didn't need it this time. I mean, and that's the cool thing about these canvas sets is when I design them, they'll be a little different every single time. We'll be doing, you know, something new, a new technique or, or something new with them um, each time. So they're never going to look exactly the same as the set before. You know what I mean? So no paint this time. This one, I mean, look at it. It looks like just it is just a beautiful kind of watercolor rendering of these pumpkins. I love this color. I love kind of the, the additional kind of tealy, kind of green tealy color in here. Really, really pretty. Um, loved this one too. I like the crispness, crispness <laughs> of the black and the white. So I didn't paint anything. Didn't paint anything. I know Cheryl, Cheryl Crow's like, what? No paint? I know. No paint this time. Okay. No paint this time. So the additional supplies that you're going to need to get started, we're going to be using Mod Podge Matte, the yellow label. Okay. Mod Podge Matte. That's my preferred uh, Mod Podge for canvases. All right. And napkins. So we're going to use Mod Podge Matte. Um, you'll need a brush. I'm using my plastic sheets with this particular um, canvas um, project. So I'm going to use my plastic sheets. If you don't have any kind of plastic wrap, you could also use a chip brush. No problem there. And then we're going to use a little bit of chalk ink today. Um, I brought, I pulled out a few colors just to show you uh, if you want, if you have any chalk inks like this, we're going to use this just a little bit, not too much. Um, but if you happen to have a chalk ink of some kind in kind of a fallish color, uh, we're going to, we're going to play with this. Okay. Very small, but just wanted to show you how pretty that, that they are and how you can use them. Um, also then we're going to be doing some pen work. Okay. We're going to be doing some pen work now, 90, 99% of the time, I'm always using my pit pins for this pen work. And we can still use these pins for our pen work. But today, I'm actually adding in a new type of pen, okay, that looks amazing with our napkin art, okay? So pit pins are a staple with napkin art. They just are. Today, I'm going to share with you a little bit 
of working with your napkins and glaze pens. Okay, glaze pens. These are super fun. They're super fun. They're great. We're going to put them on at the very end because they do, they are wet a little bit longer. Okay, a little bit longer than um, your typical pen would be. These glaze pens, and Cheryl's going to post a link to this because um, it is something pretty amazing. We have a set of 10 colors that are together, but Honestly, primarily, when I'm using these glaze pens, I really anticipate to use the black and the white the most, okay? I anticipate to use the black and the white the most. So we also brought in the black and white pens in as singles, okay? So if you just want to get a black and a white, you can. If you want to get the set and just know that you can always replace your black and white, because I guarantee you, you're going to use those the most. Okay. All right. You got your glaze pens today. Oh man, they are fun. So, and we're, I'm going to show you all of this, but I just want to tell you these glaze pens, they're very shiny, slick. They're very shiny, slick, and they kind of add some dimension. Um, I'm not like a puff paint. It's not like that. Okay. I don't, I don't want you to get, get confused. It's not like that at all. But because of this dimension and they flow very freely, very freely. So I'm going to give you some tips on that too. Okay. When we start that process, that technique, they flow very, very freely. Um, and so they look somewhat raised. Okay. And something about that, I'm going to use a kind of a fancy word here, but that juxtaposition, um, something about just that, that difference in textures between our kind of um, our paper part of the napkin, the watercolor feel of the of the napkins, the texture of the napkins, and then that slick kind of writer on them is super cool. Okay, it's it's really super cool. Let's look at this one up close, just so you can kind of see. I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna try to kind of angle this a little bit. Do you see the black? Very bold, right? Very bold. Look at this color. So it kind of just gives this, this kind of look of some special dimension. Look at the little dots in the center of the sunflower. Okay. Really, really, really fun. All right. So let's get started. Are you ready? Those are the items we're going to be using. Now, you're going to have to forgive me on one thing. I did leave one thing at home that I thought was here, but it's at home and it's my stapler. So I'm going to... I'll be show, showing you how I attach the hanger and then um, it's super easy, but I did forget my stapler this morning. So shame on me. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Okay. I'm ready to create. Let's get going. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. So first thing we're going to do is take our napkins here. Um, Cheryl McCarson is with me this morning, so she'll be posting some links. And I don't know if Cheryl's going to be on this whole time um, because I know she's worked so hard this week as well. Um, but I did post the links for the, the canvases only and then the canvases with the house display up in the description on this post. So it is there for you. I'm only going to use one square. The second square is your bonus, your bonus piece, just in case you need a do over, just in case you need to patch something. Um, and you can use that how, however you'd wish. Um, maybe you want to create something else with your napkins. So first thing we're going to do is we need to replay, we need to take off the napkin plies. All right. So uh, most of you know, I like to do what I call a lick and stick method for this. I tap my finger. I tap my thumb. Now, if you don't want to do this or your, your spit isn't as sticky as mine, I'm going to press my fingers together here on the cut part. And then do you see how it comes apart? You can also paint a tiny bit of Mod Podge on your finger, a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit, and then just kind of press it like that till it feels kind of sticky. And then that will work as well. Okay. The, this particular napkin is only a two ply. So you only have to take off one ply. I can't remember on this one. We'll see. I believe this one is also a two ply, two ply. So we only have to take off one 
apply this time in that great. <laughs> um, Debbie, right now we don't have the additional napkins separate from the kits. However, uh, if we wind up having um, if we wind up having uh, a lot left over, we will make them available. Okay. All right. Let's. You posted them again. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna uh, pour a little Mod Podge out here for us to play with. Again, I'm using Mod Podge Matte, which is the yellow label. And I'm gonna do both of these um, just at the same time because we're not painting or anything this time around. So we're going to do this step. We're going to kind of work on these uh, at the same time instead of one canvas and then another. We're going to um, we're going to kind of streamline this because we're going to do some of the same steps to each canvas. Okay, so we want to put on a healthy amount of Mod Podge. Um, Y'all, this is going to give those of you, if you've never done napkin, napkin art before, this is going to give you a nice little taste. And um, just want to give a shout out that our napkin club, um, we've been promoting it all week. It is we, Our doors are open through tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day. So if you enjoy what you see and you think you would like to receive some amazing napkins every month and... Uh, and be part of a club where I share all the fun things in a private Facebook group. Lots of fun workshops and techniques. We would love to have you. All right. So I want you to notice the napkin. Do you see how it's a little bit larger, right? A little larger than the canvas. We're not going to sand this one off, though, which uh, may be kind of interesting to some of you. I'm going to grab my plastic sheet, my plastic wrap here. I like to use a deli bakery sheet. I get them on Amazon. I start in the center and start smoothing. Okay. And then kind of start to work out. Now don't push too hard in the center because we don't want to stretch our canvas. And I just want this nice and smooth. They, in fact, the, can, the, the texture on the canvas will actually show through your napkins. And if you need to, put your hand underneath. If you need to put your hand underneath, you can. Just so you have something to kind of push against. And then I'm just going to kind of do a nice little edge here around. Okay. Now, when I pull this off... You're going to see that some of the Mod Podge is going to come up through the plastic. So put it to the side, let it dry. We don't want to use a, a wet a wet plastic wrap on a napkin, only dry, okay? Otherwise, it tries to take the napkin back off. And now we're going to come around, and we're actually going to decoupage the sides down, okay? So I'm just going to take a little bit of Mod Podge here. We'll do two sides at a time here. I'll do two sides here. And I don't want you to worry about the corners. Just kind of, you can kind of pat it down in place. Same thing over here. It is not going to reach the whole way, but don't worry about that. We're going to cover that up. Okay. And just kind of pinch the corner. Do you see that little corner? Just kind of pinch it. We're going to get rid of that here in just a moment. You can use another um, sheet of plastic here, or you can use your chip brush just to smooth that down well. Make sure you move it onto a dry part of your piece. And then let me pull this back up. And I'm just going to take my scissors and snip it off. Okay, just snip it off, and then that will just push right down. Okay, let's go over here and do this side as well. A little cut piece right there. So you kind of raise this up. Sometimes my Mod Podge kind of does go over the edge, so it'll naturally just kind of lay down there 
No, I don't have, yeah, I kind of like this side right here. Kind of happened on this side. All right, again, just kind of um, gently just kind of tap that down with your fingers. Don't smooth it too much because it could tear when the napkin is wet. It um, is at its most fragile and it could tear. So I'll take my plastic wrap again. You can use plastic wrap from your kitchen. You could cut up a sandwich baggie if you want to, but it is great for smoothing your napkin and uh, keeping it really nice and smooth. And again, I'm just going to come back and just nip off these corners. After you nip off the corners, just kind of tap them down. You can use your chip brush if you don't want to use your finger. And I promise you, don't worry about what the sides look like. They're going to be just fine in a minute. <laughs> okay, so we're going to set this one aside and let it dry while we do the next one. Same kind of process. Okay, same kind of process. Mod Podge mat. Make sure you put a healthy coat on. A healthy coat to me is one that looks really glossy. It doesn't have to be like dripping or anything, but don't be too stingy with your Mod Podge. We want to make sure that everything looks wet. And when you're putting Mod Podge on a white canvas, you kind of have to look at it in the light to be sure that you haven't missed any spots. Okay. Now I'm going to kick it up a notch on this one. And let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and coat my sides. This is just, the, you don't have to do it this way, but you can if you want to. Oops. So I just went ahead, coated my sides. And I think you can see it looks nice and wet. Now this one we're going to have to be a little more careful with. This one has the square, right? It's got the square here. So we're going to try to bring this down. Um, just kind of drag and, and drop. We're going to have the black edge kind of going around. And... Um, it can be a little tricky to try to get this exactly right, but we're just going to do the best that we can. Okay. My finger stuck. We're just going to do the best that we can here. So I have it very lightly touching. So that way I could just kind of move things around a little bit and I think we're okay. All right. Again, the edges are kind of lifting up. So it's that black kind of border that we're trying to line up around the edge of our canvas. Again, always start in the center. Always start in the center. And then you can work your way out. Love it. I think I did okay. Well, I might be a little short with my black on the top, but that's okay. We'll have something going on on the top of this one anyway. <laughs> All right, so now if you'll watch, I still have my plastic wrap down. I'm going to go ahead and smooth the sides. So see, it's just a nice little trick. Very easy, so you don't actually have to do it all separately. Just kind of pinch those corners again. We'll just come trim those off in a minute. Super easy to do. So now you know a couple ways that you can wrap those sides. All right, now we're going to just really carefully peel this off. Don't ever yank your plastic wrap off. Again, that napkin's really fragile while it's wet. All right, we're going to put that to the side. Again, I'm going to come back with my scissors and just nip off these corners. And then whatever's left, just kind of press down. All 
into the Mod Podge. Voila. All right. So cute, right? Isn't it cute with the border around it? I think it is just so, so cute. Just adorable. All right. So let's bring these two back. And we need to we need to dry them. All right. We want to dry them a little bit. I've got my heat tool here just to speed this along. If you don't have a heat tool, you can use your blow dryer. The heat, a heat tool is much hotter than a blow dryer, so we always want to keep it moving. We really just want to dry the napkin so that we can put the top coat on and not risk anything tearing. And the top coat is very important. And we'll talk about that next. Okay. So why is the top coat important? <laughs> well, we don't, we want to protect. We need to protect our napkin art, right? Yeah, that's really important. We need to protect our napkin art. The other reason that's very important, actually there's three reasons. It makes our napkins more translucent, which makes them appear even more a part of whatever surface we're putting them on, like today, the canvas. And then the other reason uh, is because when we're going to be doing pin work, a lot of pin work to these, because we're not only going to use, um, you can use your pit pins for the smaller details, um, we're going to be using the glaze pins. Okay, we're going to be using these glaze pins. They are so super cool. And I'm excited to show you, but here's the deal. If you try to use one of these, well, even the pit pins, but especially the glaze pins, if you try to use the glaze pin on um, a napkin that's not been sealed, oh my gosh, the napkin absorbs it like a spill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It just absorbs it just like a spill, okay? You've seen the paper towel commercials, right? Well, nap a napkin's purpose in life is to absorb, and it will really absorb, and it just kind of makes a, a mess. It looks like a blob, um, an ink blob. So it's very important that we, um, that we seal these, okay? All right, I think I have enough Mod Podge in here left. I usually do the sides first just because then I can set it down. Yeah, don't forget the sides because we do have napkin over there. And now we're going to do the top. So pretty. So uh, again, because we're using these glaze pens, we need to be sure that we have every little bit of these um, covered. So again, you may have to kind of hold them up in the light. Just make sure that it looks wet everywhere um, because we don't want to have any little ink blobs on this. The pit pens just get a little fuzzy, but the glaze pens would literally look like blobs. Okay. Yes, this kit comes with both canvases. Comes with everything you're going to be seeing here except for the Mod Podge and the pens. Hot glue. I need some hot glue. And then I like to use a stapler to put my hangers on. But these really aren't very heavy. You could probably just use hot glue for that too if you wanted to. So I'm just helping these to dry a little bit. And then we're actually going to work a little bit what might, may seem a little bit backwards today. <laughs> because we're actually going to embellish these. We're going to put the ribbon on. We're going to embellish them. We're going to do all of that before we do our pin work. And usually uh, that is, you know, the final step. But today we're going to add the frills first. 
And the reason we're doing that and the reason I want you to do that, okay, is because, again, if you're going to use the glaze pens, they stay wet a little bit longer. They're going to need to kind of sit. You don't want to be messing with them. You want to make sure they can sit, I would say, about 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes is safe. Five minutes is probably fine, but I like adding another five on there just to be safe, okay? <laughs> All right. So let's go back this way. Thank you, Cheryl, for answering questions for me. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to scoot these out of the way for a moment. We're going to go over here to our fibers, our little fibers. So while those are continuing to kind of um, to set up, I'm going to unwrap our little fibers here. And we're going to make a really cute bow. I also have a ruler out here because we are, I do want you to do a cut. I'm going to do one cut on these. Sorry, let me make sure they're not. Okay, so we've got, here's what you'll have. You'll have 18 inches of this jute. Okay, you'll have 18 inches of that. Oh, talk about my shirt. You like my shirt? Okay, I'll talk about it here in just a second. <laughs> you'll have 18 inches of this cute orange and white Baker's Twine. And then you're going to have two yards, two yards of this beautiful twill, the black twill and this kind of khaki caramel color twill. OK, really, really pretty. Um, so I'm going to grab a ruler here. I'm going to grab my ruler here because I need you guys to do one cut before we start uh, all of this on your black twill. I need you to cut off an 11 inch piece. Okay, 11 inch piece. And we're going to put it to the side. And then another 11 inch piece of this one, a tan, natural tan colored one. Okay, 11 inches. Put those to the side. Those are going to be for our hangers. And um, okay, I'm going to tell you about my shirt. <laughs> I love this shirt. I wear it. I wear it a lot, especially on the weekends or just whenever. Um, it is so cute. It already came kind of bleached. It says maker on it and it's from Cotton Chaos. So Cotton Chaos, they are they are two gals. They are super sweet. They're good friends of mine. We're in the same business group together. And so um, I'm a part of their T-shirt club. And then they sell these really cute, creative kind of um, T-shirts. Uh, separately from the club. And so that's what this one is. It says maker on it. Isn't it cute? It says maker. And it has these kind of little bleach spots around on it. <laughs> it's the perfect shirt for making things in because if you get stuff on it, it just looks like it's part of the shirt. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love the Cotton Chaos Girls. They're super sweet. And um, I love the quality of their t-shirts. So I'm in two t-shirt clubs. One of them is theirs, cotton, the Cotton Picking T-shirt Club. And then I'm also in um, Framed by Sarah. I'm in her uh, t-shirt club. So yeah, they, they keep me stocked. Those, those two clubs keep me stocked with super cute t-shirts. It's, it's a little gift to myself <laughs> every month. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get back to crafting. Okay, so what we're going to do next is you're going to need your hot glue gun for this. I like to use my Sure Bonder. This is my favorite glue gun, you guys. You can get it at Walmart, Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. But here's why it's my favorite. It's kind of a smaller gun. I can hold it really well. It's got the little stand here. It has an on-off switch. So if the red light is on, that means it's on. Um, if you uh, will look down here at the tip, I'm going to put my hand behind it so you can really see it. It's a micro tip. So it's a very small tip. So it controls the hot glue. And I love that. Oh, my gosh. As a crafter, it just makes makes things so, so easy. I'm going to feel of these and make sure they feel dry enough to use. I think they do. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm going to take my uh, natural colored this kind of tan, pretty, natural colored um, twine. And I'm going to start here. I usually just kind of start here on the side. I'm just going to kind of start. Actually, you can even start around the bottom if you want to. Let's do that. 
So do you see where our canvas is showing? Well, I'm going to put a little, little tiny, see how tiny you can get your hot glue? A little tiny piece of hot glue here. So your ribbon is actually going to get kind of right here to the edge of the back of the canvas. And then it's going to overlap where we wrapped the canvas. Okay. I love it because then your hot glue, I kind of drag, I call it drag and drizzle. I, my tip is actually just dragging right along the canvas. And then I'm just laying my ribbon into it, smoothing it down. Super easy. And because I, it's so thin, I can control that glue so it doesn't like, you know, it doesn't look ugly through my ribbon. It's very thin. Super easy. Love it. All right. We're just going to keep going around. You will have ribbon left over because we're going to make a bow. We're going to make a really pretty bow, actually, for these uh, this fall set. So what I'm going to do here, because we're going to end, is I'm just going to put a tiny little bit right here. Oops, I need some underneath it. Okay, just where it barely overlaps. I'll let that just sit for just a second. And then I'm going to take my scissors in here. Sorry, y'all. I can't do that. I don't think I can do that standing. Well, here, that's a better view. And I'm just going to cut that edge. Okay. And then sometimes I'll come in again because I have this teeny tiny little tip. I'll just put a tiny little, teeny little bit on there just on the edge of that just so the ribbon doesn't fray. Okay, so we're going to do that on this one. And then I'll, I'll let you guess what the color is we're going to do on this one. <laughs> it's going to be the black. Um, is this the twill you're using the same as twill tape for hemming? Um, you know, you can use twill uh, ribbon for hemming. I don't know if this particular one, I haven't ever used this particular one for hemming. It's just the ribbon. It doesn't like... It's not like a bias type tape, but I know people do use twill for that purpose. All right. So again, you could start at the corner if you want. However, wherever I'm starting on the bottom and we're going to just do the same thing. I literally am dragging the tip along the canvas you can i can hear it you probably can't hear it but i literally i call it drag and drizzle because i want it to spread out a little bit i don't want just a big thick um, bead of glue i'm gonna have to clean my fingers here a minute so drag and drizzle Yeah, the shirts are definitely true to size and they're unisex. So they're they're just great. Um, I, I I like them because I don't like anything too snug around all my my tummy rolls, you know. The the muffin top that doesn't seem to go away after 50. <laughs> so yeah, I like how they fit. I wear a large. And it fits me just fine. All right, we're to the end of this one. So I'm just gonna kind of line that up. Okay. And we're done. Again, I'm gonna put just a just a fraction just teeny I just kind of drag the tip I don't even squeeze it I don't even squeeze it for that part and if you get a little bit of blob like this don't worry you can put your heat gun on that and it will just you'll be able to kind of just pick that right back off okay 
my this is what I'm getting all over the place. I'm getting Mod Podge everywhere, so I'm gonna grab a baby wipe real quick and clean my hands. <laughs> I think that's actually Mod Podge, not um, hot glue. <laughs> Okay, so let me clean my hands up real quick. You burn your fingers when using the glue gun. Um, this is a high heat. It is a high heat. Um, but I think it's because it's not as thick. It's thin. It's very thin. Um, so you do have to work kind of quickly with it. Um, but no, I don't usually have trouble burning myself. But also, I don't know if I have any finger plants left. I've been crafting for so long. Who knows? I may, I may have completely dulled those endings of my fingers where I just don't feel it anymore. <laughs> yes. They do make little finger tips you can wear, though. The little silicone glue, glue fingers. It's a little silicone little fingertip that you just stick your finger in. They do make that. So if, um, if you're a chronic... If you're chronically burning your fingers, you probably need to invest in some of those. Mod Podge makes them plaid by Mod Podge. They're just little glue fingers. They're just little tips that fit on, that just go on your finger, silicone. Yep. Yep. Two true crafters don't have fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> well, then that would definitely be, be me. <laughs> okay. Let me go back to this screen. Now, every, all the ribbon that you have left, all the ribbon that you have left is going to be our bow. Okay. So let's make, um, okay, let's do this one. We're going to use the Baker's Twine for the bow that is the natural color. Okay, for the bow that is the natural color. All the rest of this. You're getting, you're getting four yards of ribbon in this kit. And the girls even that were prepping came and they were like, are you sure about this? Like, are you sure this is right? And I said, yep, I want us to have pretty, pretty bows for this. Since we're using a thinner ribbon, <laughs> I want to make sure they're really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to show you my little tips and tricks on making this bow. All right, it's not hard at all, I promise. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is just lay out, um, sorry, my podge fleck there, um, lay out your twine. This is going to be the orange and white twine that's in your kit. Super cute. I love Baker's twine. And what's left of your natural ribbon. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a loop, and I'll do this a couple of times, all right, just so you can see. We're going to make a loop. This ending part is going to be one of the tails of this bow, okay? Now, here's why I love twill for this. I like twill for this type of bow or any kind of ribbon that looks the same on both sides, right? It doesn't have a back or a front. It looks the same, so this is great. So I'm going to do another loop, okay? I'm going to do another loop, another loop, another loop, and another loop. So basically, I've got three loops. Make sure you can see that. One, two, three. One, two, three on both sides. Let's do it again. I'm... Um, I've got plenty. Look, I have some extra ribbon left over because we'll be cutting the tails off of this. So if you did want to make your loops a little bit bigger, you can. Okay, but I kind of like this size for this canvas. So let's do it again. All right, let's do it again here. So this is going to be my tail. I have, a, and you could even do this. You could do like a, maybe a bigger loop. And maybe your next loop is a, a little uh, smaller. I don't know. I'm, mine are all just kind of whatever they are. Okay. All right. And if you feel like you don't have enough going on here, I mean, you can always just redo this. Now, um, most of the time what I do is I take a clothes pin and I just put a clothespin around all of this, but actually this particular ribbon will just lay, okay? There's no wire in it. 
Um, you're not going to make a knot in this ribbon at all. You're just making the loops. So make sure you have enough for your tail, right? We'll trim them here to make them the same size here in a minute. Um, we're going to lay them kind of in the center of our twine. And then we're just going to tie, make sure this is kind of in the center. And we're going to tie this really tight. Do you see what happens when we tie it tight? How the, the ribbons just, sorry, how they kind of get floofy. They get really cute and floofy. Put my finger there. I'm going to tie a knot, a double knot. You might need a second pair of hands for that. If you use your clothespin, it'll help you. <laughs> it's like your third set of hands. Now, look how cute that bow is. Do you see how cute and floofy that bow is? Uh, I'm going to cut a little bit of this off. I usually trim the tails when we put the, the, um, the bow onto our canvas. So we've made this one. So just let's set that one over here out of the way. And now we're going to make the black one in the same exact way. Get same exact way. This gives you some repetition, so you'll really learn how to make these. They're so cute. Yeah, the clothespin helps so much, Jill. It really does. In fact, I have a clothespin right here. Let me just grab one so I can show y'all exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the clothes. Here's a little clothespin right here. Okay. So I'll use that here on this one. Okay, so we're going to do the same type of bow. Okay, we want to make sure we have enough for our tail. This works so great with ribbon that is the same on both sides. You know what I mean, right? Doesn't have a back or a front. It's the same on both sides. I don't try to keep mine all super even. I kind of like it when it's, you know, some of them are, you know, a little bit longer than the other. And then this is what I was talking about. You can actually take your little clothespin. This is a little teeny clothespin, but you can take your clothespin to hold all this together if that helps you. I have a big clothespin on my other table over there. And now we're going to tie the jute around this one. But don't tie it all the way. Take the clothespin off now and move it down. We want to make sure it's, it's, you know, somewhat centered. So let me look at this. I think that looks, does that look about centered to you guys? Okay. And I'm going to tighten nice and tight, nice and tight, double knot. Okay. And let's trim this tail just a little bit. So you're going to have plenty of ribbon for this. Okay, because we'll probably come back in and tweak these a little bit more as well. All right. So let's look at them up close. Super cute, right? Super cute. There's that one. Really cute. Perfect. Okay, now let's go back to this one. And we're going to grab our... 11 inch piece of ribbon. This is going to be for the hanger. And this is where I goofed up today. I didn't have time to go back home. I forgot I had taken my, um, I had taken my stapler home. So I'm going to show you on the back of this one. Normally what I do with the 11 inch piece is I pop in two staples, two staples. Okay. Just pop them in. I have a great little stapler. It's called an arrow. The arrow is the brand. It just, it's a handheld stapler, just pop, pop. And then if I need to, I'll tap it in um, lightly with a hammer. If you know, if I feel like I need to. Okay. So um, these are pretty lightweight. These are pretty lightweight. So today just to show you. I'm going to have to just use hot glue. I've got to put another glue stick in here. But I do prefer staples. So even though I'm putting hot glue on this one, I will be stapling over this hot glue. Okay. I <laughs> just want to make sure y'all know that because I don't want these hangers coming off. All right. So what is that? About a finger's width right down onto your canvas. 
and that is how you put your hanger in and like I said normally I'm pop pop I'm putting a couple of um, staples in there 11 inches is the perfect size for this house it will hang right where you need it to hang it is the perfect perfect size for this house so on this particular canvas remember don't forget to take your leaves apart they when you get them in your kit it's going to look like you have one leaf of both but trust me there's two there you got to pull them apart all right i'm going to use the orangey ones on this particular canvas here in just a second you guys ready <laughs> and we're going to use an acorn just grab and grab one of the acorns out of your out of your kit okay we're going to focus on these um these leaves first these leaves are look kind of big don't they they look kind of big right so we're going to kind of make them a little bit smaller so i'm going to fold this first i'm going to fold it kind of in the center and then i'm going to go kind of like Oh, wait, wrong way. I'm going to do this way. I'm not folding them in the center. Okay, here's the center. I had to remember what I what I had done. I'm actually going to fold this and this together. Here, we, gotta, we just got to do it. We just got to do it, girls. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue right here to the side of the center of this leaf. All right. And I'm going to squeeze these two little parts together. Here's the center. Okay, so I'm over here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I know it feels funny, and you may think it looks funny right now, but it's going to look great on our canvas. Okay, and then I'm going to squeeze in right there. Let me hold it for just a second. These are just artificial leaves. Just need to hold it for just a second. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep me from having a flat leaf and it's going to give me more of a dimensional leaf. See how flat this is? Super flat. Well, we want more dimension. Okay. We want more dimension. So watch me do this again. No glue in the center. There's your little center line right there. Our glue is going to go kind of over here just a little bit. You won't need much. And then this half of our leaf, you're going to kind of fold and squeeze. So your glue is happening in between that little pleat there. Okay. Thank you for sprinkling. Thank you for doing that. I'm so excited. We have so many people watching. I was really worried with it being Labor Day weekend. We wouldn't have that many people watching, but it's so hot. It's kind of, or at least here, it's so hot. It's not really fun to do anything. Okay, so there's um, my glue, and again, I'm going to kind of pinch this. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. Kind of pinch it up. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, and don't worry what, oh, yeah. I need to put another little bit of glue in here. There's really uh, no right or, wrong, right or wrong way to do this. It's just going to give us more of a dimensional leaf. And then this part up here, please don't worry about because you're never going to see it. Okay. You're never going to see this part right here. So don't stress. Nobody gets creative heartburn over that. Okay. All right. Agreed. <laughs> okay. So now then I'm going to hold up my canvas right here. I'm going to run some hot glue kind of. Just kind of right here in the center. I don't know how far that is, how long that is. But I'm going to take one of my leaves on its side. And I'm going to push it into that line of hot glue. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to push it into that hot glue. Let me pull that part down. So it, it looks funny. I know it looks funny. <laughs> it looks kind of like a leaf bow, doesn't it? It looks kind of funny, but it's going to look really good here in just a minute. Okay. Does that make sense to y'all? So you can pull the little ends out, but it's almost like we're looking at the leaves sideways, right? 
kind of looking at them sideways like that. I like showing you all my little tricks, tricks and tips on, um, on adding the, I call this adding the frills to me. This is adding the frills. We're going to put another uh, little blob of glue in here. And now I'm going to take this bow that I made. Now this bow, I'm actually going to lay it kind of on its side. Okay, kind of on its side and it's going to be right in the center. Sorry, I'll, I'll move my fingers here so you can see it's kind of on its side. And the reason you know it's on its side is because the knot of this twine is facing forward. It's facing me right now. Okay, see how it's kind of facing forward. Don't worry too much about uh, the bow part. We'll, we'll fuss with that here in just a minute. Okay, so we're going to make sure that gets nice and dry. You can lay it down and now we can kind of fuss with our loops and all the things. Also, you can, uh, we're going to play a little bit with our, um, oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? I put it at the top instead of the bottom. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. You have an option. <laughs> Did you know this canvas was, was optional? <laughs> Let me show you. You can put, uh, that's so funny. That's so funny. I can't believe I did that. Okay, you can put your bow at the bottom of one of the canvases and you can put your bow at the top of the canvas if you want to. We'll let you choose. <laughs> so in this canvas set, I'm tying a bow right now with, the twine, kind of a big loopy bow here. That's so funny. I can't believe I did that. Well, actually I can. I can't. It actually looks pretty both ways, so it's not going to matter. Um, but here's what I'd like for you to do, just so your canvases look a little bit different. Um, put one bow on one canvas at the top and put the other bow at the bottom. That way they look different. So today I'm going to do it just the opposite and then you can decide which way you like. This one's at the bottom. <laughs> and this one's at the top. And the last thing we have to do on here, you guys, is just put on the acorn. And the acorn is going to kind of sit here in the center of everything. Again, a nice little blob of glue on here and acorns look better if they're not straight. Okay, so kind of, let me, I've got to lay this down a little bit here. I'm gonna lay this down. So don't put it on there super straight. Let it look like it's kind of fallen. Look how cute that is. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of fallen. So yes, it does look cute at the top. <laughs> And it also looks cute at the bottom, either way you want to do it, okay? Top or bottom, either way. Look how cute they are, right? <laughs> okay, that's so funny. All right. So since I did this one at the top, I'll do the next one at the bottom, and then you can decide which way you like it best. We're going to do pretty much the same exact thing. Okay, so remind, just help me remember. Okay, this time I'm going to the bottom. <laughs> it does look good both ways, Diane. I totally agree. It looks good both ways. So you guys can, uh, this will be proof that it does look good both ways. Make sure and peel your little leaf apart. We're going to do the leaf thing again, same exact way. I don't want a flat leaf. I want a dimensional leaf. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here on this half. Okay. And then just kind of fold up and pinch. Pinch it up. So it's just kind of folded and pinched. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold up and pinch. Okay. And again, that gives us a nice, a little bit more of a dimensional leaf. 
So if you have a lot of flat leaves in your uh, in your crafty stash, your fall stash, crafting stash, it's just a great way to kind of make it look more dimensional. I'm so glad that y'all think either way looks good too. <laughs> I feel like this is like my 57th time to go live this week. <laughs> I know it's not, but I'm sure that's where my brain is just a little foggy. Okay, same thing over here. We're just going to kind of pinch. Oops. Just pinch it up. They'll look kind of weird, but they're going to look great. They're going to look great on the canvas. So look, that one looks kind of wonky, but it doesn't matter. It's going to look just fine. Okay, so we still need to put on our hanger. Make sure when you turn this over that it is at the top. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm using hot glue right now, but normally I use staples. So when I get home, I, st I left my stapler at home and I'm up at the shop today. Um, when I get home, I'll just pop a couple staples into this just to ensure that they don't fall out. And I do about a finger's worth of ribbon here. Okay, 11 inches makes a perfect hanger for the house display. Okay, we're going to work at the bottom this time. <laughs> okay, let's see how these are going to look. Oh, I like it. I like it. All right. So our first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of hot glue right here on the side. Okay, on that on that side. And then I'm going to, it's easier to me to put it, for some reason, when you do the bottom one, it's easier to put it on the leaf. So if you find that that's easier for you to do also for the top, uh, then uh, by all means do that. It just, I don't know, just seems easier. So it's just showing you a different way. So if it's easier to put it on the leaf instead of the canvas, you can, sorry, I'm going to use my little pleat here, and use your middle jar, your middle jar right here. Use your middle jar as your, your you know, helping you gauge where the middle is. Okay, so I have my little leaves, leaves down there. Now the bow. Now on this one, because we're at the bottom, we're not really looking at the top, we're actually going to put the bow right here at the edge of the canvas. We're not putting it underneath. We're going to put it kind of on the top here a little bit. So go ahead and put your line kind of right on that corner edge, that little where the edge kind of wraps over. That's where I want you to put it. Put your glue. And then we're going to stick our bow down. So your bow is actually really getting stuck to the very, very, very bottom of the canvas. Okay, the very, very, very bottom. It looks good down here too on this one. Yeah, they look good either way. You can mess with your loops. Sometimes, y'all, if I get loops that are just acting a little crazy, uh, I, I have been known to go in and put a little dot of glue underneath a loop just to get it to lay where I, I want it to lay. Let's give our tails a little pretty scissor cut here. And we're going to do a bow out of the jute. Oh, I got glue again. Let me get the glue off of me. Make yourself a pretty little loopy bow. I liked using the natural jute on this one. And again, I like to tie a little knot in the tails. They really do look great either way. Yeah, they really do. I'm not just saying that because I, I did it backwards. <laughs> I promise. If I wasn't happy with it, we'd be taking it back off. All right, so now you've got your other acorn. And again, just to kind of decide now on this acorn, because I kind of have this little, you know, I've got this little space right here. I actually kind of lean it toward in towards the canvas. 
So if you're doing the one on the bottom, put a little hot glue in the center of the bow, but also above it, because I'm going to lean this one kind of in. So it's going to be a little bit further, further up because when this is hanging down, it kind of fills that gap. Okay. It kind of fills that gap. Isn't that so cute? So let's look at this one. Let's compare these two top or bottom top or bottom they're both cute right <laughs> top or bottom they're both adorable they're both cute <laughs> yeah i think they're going to work for you either way either way okay all right so any questions on that part any questions on that Okay, we're going to do one more little accent here. I just couldn't, just couldn't help myself. Um, oh, well, wait, let's add this after. Let's add this after. Okay, so don't put your little heart on yet. Let's wait on that. We're going to do a little pin work now. I'm going to put this one to the side. All right, you guys ready? We're going to talk about these glaze pens. All right, we're going to talk about these glaze pens. So I want to show them uh, to you. All right. Now, when you first get a set. Uh, here, let me grab this one, I think. Okay. When you first get a set or you get the black or the white, do you see it has that little plastic tip? It has a little plastic tip on the top. So when yours don't work, <laughs> you're going to realize, oh, there's a plastic tip there. Now, if you're really careful, you can try to save those tips, but I've already lost them. I was trying so hard to save them and I've already lost them. So it is okay. Uh, we do have a set of these really pretty colors. I think great colors for fall. Um, let me show you all of them in here. Really cute, pretty colors. Um, and then we also brought in the black and white singles just the single black, the single white, because I guarantee you, those are the colors you're going to be going through the most with these pens. Okay. Cheryl's posting a link to them so you can check them out. Now, the reason we're doing these last, all right, is it's different. I just, I want to make sure you understand this is different than what we normally use are our pit pens. And if you have pit pens, use them. You can use them. Um, you're going to have a more delicate look with the pit pen than you are with these glaze pens. These glaze pens, it's a completely different kind of ink. It's a very free flowing kind of ink. Okay. It's almost, it almost feels paint like, okay. It's going to be super shiny, super shiny, glossy, and you've got to be careful with it. Uh, I would say to give it about 10 minutes to completely dry. Okay. That that's probably adding a little much more than likely it's going to be dry in about five minutes. OK, don't be tempted to touch it. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Because I was tempted when I first started using them. I was tempted to touch it <laughs> too soon. OK, don't be tempted to touch it. Give it at least five minutes. I would say add on another 10 minutes just to be sure. OK, they are amazing, though. They're very free flowing. So I just, I, I want to show you here. This is, is the black. This is just a, um, it's just a tag, but I just want to show you when you start, start off of your project. Okay. Start off of your project and get the, get it flowing. And what will happen is you'll see, like, even if you do little dots, it almost like puddles up a little pile of paint and here's the thing or ink I guess we should call it it's going to be next to impossible for me to show you that this has a raised look okay because it's just not going to show on camera so you've you're going to have to be a little bit careful watch what I'm going to do with my my bows I'm going to tuck the tails up here just tuck your tails up here for you know while your um, glaze pens are drying okay so you're just going to need to watch. All right. Very free flowing. Start on a separate piece of paper till that that ink starts flowing. 
okay? You must, you must, you must seal your napkin, okay? Otherwise, it's going to just absorb it. You're going to get an ink blot, okay? So make sure you seal your napkin, and we need to make sure that that Mod Podge, whatever you sealed it with, is completely dry. That Mod Podge is completely dry, okay? Okay, I know we want to touch it so bad, but I'm telling you, please learn from me. Don't touch it. <laughs> Wait five minutes, at least, maybe 10, all right? Okay, so uh, just kind of watch. Um, you're going to want to move fairly uh, quickly with this. It is very free flowing. Okay, very free flowing. You can still be very doodly. You can still be very wiggly, right? You can kind of come in here. We want to kind of be wiggly on this one, especially because this is kind of the... Um, and if you leave your pen in one place too long, it's going to puddle a little bit. Do you see it? Isn't it awesome? Can you kind of see that dimension? I hope you can. Not like a puff paint. It's not like that. It's thinner. It's very thin, but it does have a little bit of dimension and the glossiness will stay. It's going to be super shiny. Okay. Super, super shiny. So keep your hand moving. If it's something small that you want to add a little small detail to, okay, Time, like a, a real delicate detail, use your pit pins, okay? You, this is going to be thicker, all right? It's going to be thicker. It's going to be bolder. And you're going to move quickly. I want you to move kind of quickly because I don't want it puddling on you. And it just looks awesome. And just let your hand, these are pumpkins. These are natural pumpkins. Let your hand be a little wiggly, all right? For some of us, we try so hard to do our pen work completely straight, but that's not really what we need to do, especially on this particular canvas, because we've got this kind of watercolory, very um, fun kind of natural look. If you want to take this to the side, you can, okay? I'm going to just focus on the top um, for right now. And then I can also come in and do like some, some little lines, right? Just put, if you want to put any little lines anywhere, if you go over a spot, like we kind of do our, do our uh, double trace sometimes in the, in the napkin club, you can do that. Like you can kind of go like that. If you go too close, it's just going to make it thicker. Okay. It looks so cool. <laughs> I mean, it really does. It looks so super cool. So we're going to do some of these. I'm going to come up here and again, I'm going to move my bow here just a little bit. Now, if you didn't want to add your bow until after all the pin work is dry, you could do that. But I would have had to wait. You would have been sitting here waiting. So that's why I chose to do mine first. And um, just come in wherever you want to add this black color to. We're going to use other colors too. And then I usually just go around and do a little bit on the sides after the fact. Okay. So I can kind of bring, go, just kind of follow this. I wasn't sure if that was a leaf or a flower or what. So I'm going to treat this like a leaf. I think it is a leaf. I'm just going to kind of, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm just going to kind of treat it like a leaf. There we go. Okay. Pretty cool. It is, uh, it really creates dimension without it being too like, um, oh, I don't know how to say it. It's not, it's not as raised as you think it, it would be. Okay. Well, I'm going to come in here and do this stem and then we're going to do a different color. And then I'll show you kind of on the one that I have finished. So let's go in here and again, be kind of, you know, we want to be kind of natural, wiggly, just kind of make your own doodly in your own little lines and things here. really sets them off. They just look, honest to goodness, you guys, they look like little, little pieces of art. 
They really, really do. So I'm going to go in with this color now. I see how there's some kind of some reddish hues in this particular um, um, pumpkin. So again, go to a piece of paper, something to get it flowing first. Don't start it on your project. And then let's add some red. This is kind of like a, it's kind of like a coppery red. And let's do this one in this coppery red, or I don't know what color, what color you want to kind of call that. Isn't that cool? So if you get the set, the set will have all these colors in it. And it's okay to kind of doodle trace, uh, which is like a double. Like you just go back and don't worry if your if your hands um, if you're if you you know go right back over your pumpkin area or not. It's okay if there are gaps. It's okay to lift up your hand every once in a while. Look how awesome that looks. You see what I mean? I have little gaps. I have little, I want it to have some of this really pretty dimension. And on this part of the pumpkin, you're just kind of trying to figure out kind of where those little little areas are. And like I said, I usually come back in and I'll do a little bit on the sides if I feel like I need to here and there. And then just come in and do a little bit of just, you know, little doodles, little doodles, wherever you want them to be. You can even fill this in. It works kind of like paint. So if there's places that you want it to be thicker, it can be thicker. I think that's pretty good. Isn't it cool? I know it's so fun. They're so fun. But I do, but I promise you, you will use your black and white more than anything. I think in traditional, I mean, obviously this is fall, but I really think you'll be using your black and white the most. Now there's two colors of green in this set. There's kind of this lighter color, and then there's this color. This color has more of kind of a teal look to it. So let me show you what this one looks like. Let's use this one. Okay. Let's use it over here. We'll use it on this leaf right here. Okay. So again, I almost did it. Let me go back to my little scrap piece here. Always get the get it flowing. And once it's flowing well. Then we can take it to our piece. Do you see how this one has kind of a teal look to it? On this particular piece, I'm going to use a little bit of this teal and the green. I'm going to use two colors. Can you see that? Kind of tealy looking right there. I'm going to use, I'll use both colors. And then let's kind of go up. This is a leaf. So let's do some little veins here. Maybe this one can come out of here. And now let's use the other color just so you can kind of compare them. See how it kind of has a tealish look to it? Really pretty. This is going to take a little time because I did do quite a bit of a, this one is more kind of olivey green here. You can kind of see the difference. See the top one is that teal and the side one over here is a more, a little bit more olivey green, but I think it's kind of fun to use both. It's almost like we're, we're kind of painting. Use whatever colors you want. You could even come in and, Bring in some of these colors into and, and let them kind of mix. Okay. Pretty, pretty. Let's go down here. Now, there are little yellow flowers down here. And I just did this to them. 
it was kind of hard to tell what was down there. So I just kind of, I want you to see how, how gloss, how blobby that is. Do you see? Like if you go over it and you stay in one place, it gets kind of blobby, right? So let's do this one too. And some of this, you're just going to have to kind of decide where you think is, you know, the end of the flower. See what I mean? That cool. And then let's come back. I think I'm going to come back with the, the black on these. Let me. So then my flower, you can give it kind of whatever dimension you want and maybe put in a few little stemmy things. Okay. So when that dries, it's going to look more green. Okay. But right now, do you see how wet that is? It's very wet. <laughs> it's, it's very, 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 very wet. So kind of fun kind of fun i'm going to show you the one that's completely finished with all of the accents that i added using the glaze pen because uh, you can't really go wrong with this you're just going to do whatever you want to do now this one's dry i can touch it and when you touch it you can kind of feel that dimension but do you see how the shininess stays the shininess stays. You can do all those little swirls. It's kind of fun to do maybe some leaves in green, some leaves in black. There's the red down here, the little flowers. It's so fun. So, so fun. <laughs> but don't touch it. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. It needs some time to dry. And especially if you do some little thicker little areas like this, um, give it 10 minutes, really. Okay, I would give it 10 minutes. Okay, it is so amazing. I know, they just look gorgeous. Okay, we're going to move on to the other one because I feel like, you know, you got this down. You guys can do this. I know you can. Um, I want to go to this one. Um, again, I did quite a bit of pin work on this one just because I was having so much fun. I couldn't stop. <laughs> so there's a couple things I want to show you, though, on the sunflower. OK, on the sunflower. And I'll show you the one that's completely finished here in, in just a moment. On the sunflower, I did this pretty fast because, again, there's a lot of there's a lot of petals here. OK, there's a lot of petals here. So you're going to have to move kind of fast. The faster you move, the thinner it will be. OK, so just I'm going to just quickly just watch how fast and I'm trying not to press down much at all with my pen. OK, I'm barely kind of touching it with the edge. If you'll do it quicker and barely touch, it's going to come out thinner. All right, so you just kind of have to go fast, quick, light, very light. Just let the just let the tip of the pen touch, okay, when it's something more fine. Now, if that's hard for you, this may be one you want to use some of your pit pens on for certain things and then come back in with your glaze pens for something else. Now, this part I really had fun with. Um, the glaze pens, they hold their shape. OK, and let me see if I can explain what that means. I'm going to come in and just do some little just little scoochy scoochy little scribbling around this um, around this sunflower. See that what happens? It, it doesn't drip like it just kind of stays where it's supposed to stay. And I love that. So it just kind of stays where it's supposed to stay. And then in the center of the sunflower, I did little dip dots. So I literally just went and held my pen in place. You can kind of do a little circle, but let it puddle. Let it puddle. 
Hang on, I'm going to show you. And look, you get these little dimensional dots. Let me kind of hold it in the light. Do you see? Little dimensional dots. So fun. Okay. Super fun. So yeah, you can, um, oh, can you resin over these? I believe so. Yes. I, in fact, I know so because they're going to, um, if you want me to try one, I can, but in looking at the chemical components that are in the glaze pens, it should not be a problem at all um, to uh, put resin over them. I don't mind testing that though, to be sure. Um, but with looking at the components that are in this pen, it should not be a problem. Okay. You don't have to seal these again, by the way. You don't have to go back over them. They're done. When they're done, they're done. Okay. When they're dry, they're done. You don't have to do anything. So the other thing that's kind of uh, fun is let's look at like some of these little tiny leaves. I did not do all of this. I just want to make sure you know, I did not ink everything because there's so much going on in these jars. Okay. There's a lot going on in these jars. So I kind of just, just chose to, to choose what I wanted to add this ink to. I came around and again, the faster you go and the lighter you touch, kind of the thinner it will be. If you slow down, um, it's going to be thicker. Okay, because it's very free flowing. So I'm going to try to whoa, go a little quicker on these little veins so that they're just very lightly touching on those little veins there. Okay, and we're going to look at the finished one here in just a second so I can show, the, show them to you. I did use uh, some of the different colors. Um, on this one, the other one I did the kind of that copper reddish color. I'm going to use this one. This one's more of kind of a, um, here, I'll show you the difference. That's the one I used on the pumpkin on the other um, canvas. This is this one. See, so it's a little different, right? All a little different. So if I want to come in and do this one, I'm going to do this one thicker. Just so you can see. So how do you get it to be thicker? Well, you go over it and you slow down. You slow down and you kind of go back over it and it's going to be thicker. So if you want it to be thinner, you go fast and you barely touch the tip. All right, that's how you get it to be thinner. If you want it to be thicker, like this, you're going to slow down and make it a little thicker. It's so fun. <laughs> and I'm just like thinking like, gosh, with some of like our Christmas projects coming up, um, we'll be using these, these glaze pens in the napkin club. Just think about some Christmassy things and, um, we'll probably bring in more colors at that point. I'm going to add a little bit of the black here. I have noticed that just for this little stem here. Okay. I have noticed that if you're being, if you're going to be really thick in one area and then you want to come in and add in another color, they do kind of blend together. And if you don't want them to blend together, just wait, wait and let that area dry before you come in and put in the next part. Okay. So, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the top of this one. Okay. Just so you can see, I want to, uh, hang on, let me put the lid back on. Very important. Make sure you put your lids on. <laughs> okay. So I want you to look up here. Yep. I did that leaf. I did those. I did this, these little leaves with kind of an orangey color, but look, nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. I did not put glaze or pen work on everything. It was too much. It was just going to be too much. Okay. So some things have pen work. Some things do not. Okay. These little berries right here. I don't know if you can tell, but they're raised. They're a little bit raised because I puddled the paint there. Okay. You can see it a little better like that. And now we're going to talk about this down here. All right. So, uh, You've got, you've got, um, we've got good pictures of these. Um, I've got some close-up pictures that I'm going to post uh, for you. I'll post them on my page, but I'll also post them in the um, Napkin Club. Okay, some close-ups just so that you can see a little better. 
So what did I just do with that pen? Oh, get the wrong color on. All right, so this is that kind of more reddish color. And I wanna show you how I made the jars kind of stand out. Okay, so this is the more reddish color. Um, again, like I said, I, I'm, I'm using a lot of the colors right now just because I want to show you. But I think overall, um, I would definitely be using the black and white the most. Uh, just because I just, just, I just know when I'm doing pen work, I use a lot of black. And I love the white for accents. And we're going to talk about the white here in just a minute. So do you see how I can kind of come into this jar? All right, I did the outline. But look at the back here. Watch what we can do because we want this jar to feel kind of translucent. So I'm going to do just kind of a thinner line back here and up here. And then just a little foot, a little foot, foot, whatever that is, a little doodle right there. See how that makes the jar look like it's more translucent? I love it. Now I want the letters to stand out more. You lefties are going to have to be really careful with your palms. So I'm going to go slow because I want this to be fairly thick and a little more raised. If ever it stops flowing and it, that hasn't happened for me yet, but if it does, you're going to just go back to your paper, your scrap paper and let it start flowing again. So it doesn't uh, drip. You don't want to, you don't want to cause a big drip or something on here. So see how fall really stands out now? Isn't that cute? Now let's look over here at the word um, thankful. Are you guys liking this? You're a lefty. Okay, Rhonda, just keep that palm up. You know, you lefties, you got to worry about this right here. Keep that palm up or hold your pin up higher. Okay. And again, just embrace the wiggles. This looks better doodly right? It really does look better doodly. It doesn't look, it, it looks more artistic. It looks more handmade. I'm going to use this color. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Did I do the right one? Yeah, I did the right one. Okay. I'm going to use this color on this one. It's not going to show up as much, but it still is because it's going to be glossy. And let me tuck that down. And again, I'm going to go kind of back here. A little bit in the front. And a little bit of a line right here. So you kind of see that it'll show up. It's going to show up because, again, that gloss is not going to go away. That's why it's tricky. That's why you can't touch it because you're going to think it's still gonna look wet even when it's dry, okay? So the other thing I decided to do on um, this one is I decided to make um, thankful, well, I was gonna try. I was gonna try to make thankful a little bit more bold and I wanna show you what it looks like because then you can decide. The white pen is super fun. We're gonna use it here in just a minute, but if you look at thankful here, right? That's just the napkin. If you look at thankful here, that's the, the glaze pen on top of it. I got this a little thick. I got this a little thick. So if you can somehow, if you add your glaze pen, um, and again, you're lighter and swifter. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna barely touch, I'm gonna try to just barely touch this because I do like it looking shiny. Okay. So I'm doing it as thin as I possibly can. The first one, I, I did it too slow and it got thick. And even though you may be like, well, I can't tell that that's even on there. I promise you it's on there because it's going to... It's going to be gloss. It's going to be shiny. And it also is a little bit more raised. So I did better this time because I was faster and I kept just the tip down. 
Okay, just very, didn't put down a lot of pressure. Okay, so where else can you put in some whites? Well, I put some in up here. White is really great for accents. Like if you just wanna highlight, you know, an area. And also something you need to know about the white. I'm gonna do these two little things right here, white. When you first put it on, it's gonna look kind of milky. Do you see, it looks milky. But if you just wait, if we just wait a second, you're gonna see that it's gonna actually turn very white. It's actually turning more white down here right now. As it dries, it's gonna turn more white. So those two little places, let me show you over here, when it dries, look at those white. That's what I did white. And then I came back with my pit pen, with my little uh, extra small pit pen and did a little bit of um, doodling on top. Okay, that's how white they're gonna get. It just, the white starts out kind of translucent. And by the way, there are two pins. If you get the set, there's two pins. You need to be careful not to get them mixed up. This is white. Guess what this one is? Clear. Clear. And I, I was racking my brain at first thinking like, why would you want a clear one? But then I realized there are times when you just want to um, draw the deep, like the detail could already be on the napkin. And you don't really need to go over it, but you want it to be shiny. So if you want to go in with the clear, the clear one has the more, um, this one's more opaque white. And then this, this, uh, this one is clear. But if there's just something already that's already a detail on the napkin, you don't really want to add more ink or color to it but you want it to be shiny. You want it to stand out. It's almost like, like uh, your glossy accents in a pen. Okay. But it's crystal clear. Isn't that cool? So anyway, just telling you that there is a difference between your whites and um, you'll see as this is starting to dry, it's starting to dry it. When it dries, it's going to be super white, super opaque white. Now, one more thing I did on this one. And of course I did more pen work and, all that, but I did decide because I had done pen, pen work on the others, I decided to use black on this jar and just kind of doodle around it, my little acorns in the way. And then I also did lines on the plaid. Look how this really makes this plaid jar stand out. And I went across all the lines of the plaid. So cute. Do you see how that just really helps all of that just really stand out? I thought it was so cute. So remember how we talked about the chalk inks? I need to raise this up a little bit. Remember how we talked about the chalk inks? Um, here they are. And you have your little wood heart. So I decided to ink over my wood heart. I just felt like that jar needed something. This had a word, this had a word. I felt like this needed something in it to be something dimensional. So uh, I just wanna show you that your wood heart can be whatever color you want it to be. You could paint it if you want to, but I kind of wanted to do something softer. Um, the color I used on this one was called cobblestone. Sorry. The color I used on this one was called cobblestone. <laughs> But if you wanted to do a brown, we have these in all, all different colors, but I thought it would be fun on this one. I'm going to use this color called Desert Sun because I just want to show you how pretty you can either just ink the edge. You could ink it all one color and then come back and ink another color on the edges if you wanted to. That's what I thought I would do with this one. So I'm just going to kind of ink over this one. I tend to really love golds and yellows and all the things. So I'm just going to kind of ink over that. Look how cute, right? Okay, I'm not quite done. I'm going to take some brown because you can, if you want to, you can come in and do another color just around the edges. Just kind of fun. 
It's a chalk inks that dries really fast. The other way that you can use these chalk inks are on the edges of your canvas. So like if you did want to add um, some pretty chalk ink, maybe around an edge, let me show you kind of right, right here. I'm just gonna add some right here. I could come in and just kind of smudge in some ink. I sometimes come back and smudge it with my finger or a paintbrush. And then you can just pop it with your heat gun to heat set it, okay? So really fun to come in and do, do that if you want to. And then I decided to add some pen work to my little, to my little uh, um, heart here. So I'm using the black because I want to show you that this these glaze pens can be used on all kinds of surfaces. Right? All kinds of surfaces. Paper crafting, wood, canvas, all the things. So I just did a little bit of accent on there. And then I will just, when this is all completely dry, I'm going to lay it on there. Just, okay, I think it's okay. Right, like that. So I would just hot glue that on. Okay, just use some glue to put that on. Isn't that cute? So let's look at this one up close. I want us to look at this one up close again so that you can see the white. So if there's anywhere, do you see how I put some white accents kind of up here? You can put white accents on your pumpkins or your gourds if you want little white berries or anything anywhere. I went a little thick on this, so go lighter. I did better on the second one. I went lighter. I barely, barely let the tip touch, okay? Um, and did some greens in here too, um, but I didn't do pen work everywhere. You may think it's everywhere, but it's really not. I kind of picked, just, just picked and picked and choosed. <laughs> Horrible grammar. I just picked areas that I wanted to place it in. And then it, it gives it dimension when not everything is, is, has pen work. I said inked, I'm sorry. It gives it a little more dimension when not everything is inked because some of it looks forward, some of it looks further back, right? So it is okay not to ink every single section. This is the easiest place to see that right there, okay? And guess what? After 10 minutes of drying, you're done. You're done. After 10 minutes, you're all done. <laughs> So now we know, I'm going to go back to this screen right here. Okay, let me move this guy out of the way. Now we know that this one looks really cute with a bow at the top. But it also looks cute with a bow at the bottom. <laughs> oh, goodness. This one looks cute with a bow at the top, right? And this one also looks cute with a bow at the bottom. Here, let me see if I can grab this heart. Yes. <laughs> so regardless where you decide to put your bow, <laughs> it's going to look adorable. Okay, they're going to look adorable. Just uh, just remember, the pit pens dry almost instantly, right? They dry really fast. The glaze pens are more dimensional, and they're wetter, and they are going to take longer, okay? They are going to take longer. So um, just be, be cautious. And then they just look so amazing on our seasonal house display. There's that one. I'm using this one for fall, like just general fall. And then when no, when we get closer to uh, November, when we get closer to Thanksgiving, I'm going to switch to this one. Yeah. And they just look so great. Our houses, the my techniques on the house keep the houses very neutral so that any season, right, any season, any holiday um, looks great.